Konnichiwa Sumo Wrestling fans, welcome to another edition of Sumo Card Hub. Today I'm going to do a magazine flip through of Sumo World Magazine from January 1973. This is the inaugural issue of that publication, so excited to bring that to everybody today. <music> Hey, hope everybody had a great weekend and was able to catch the final day of the March 2022 tournament. No spoilers, but a great ending to a great tournament. So go check that out if you haven't already. Wanted to do this magazine flip through of Sumo World Magazine. You can see here from January 1973. And you can see Takamiyama uh, on the uh, cover of this magazine. And uh, Takamiyama, uh, Jesse Kuhalua from Hawaii, was an extremely famous uh, sumo wrestler in the 1970s, 1960s, 1970s, and 1980s. And uh, he won the uh, the tournament in in the in July of 1972. <laughs> sparked a huge sumo boom in the english-speaking world and so uh, this magazine was born at that time to really meet the demands of uh of, of the english-speaking world and, and their interest in now sumo wrestling so i wanted to do again a quick um, flip through this is the very first issue of sumo world magazine i have all the issues all the way up till right at the end of 1999 and 2000. So if you like this content, uh, just let me know and I'll, and I'll do some more magazines of maybe some interesting uh, highlights or interesting history of Sumo. But uh, wanted again, just do a quick flip through, maybe make a few comments as we uh, check out this magazine. Color, uh, at least on the, uh, the outside, you can see here. So here's a Musashi Gawa who wrote a little introduction. He was Dewa no, I think Dewa no Hana. Um, so my gosh, he's a wrestler from uh, 1930s, I believe, 1940s. So he ended up being the um, chairman of the Sumo Association or president of the Sumo Association. So you can see his comments there. So Andy Adams was the publisher at the beginning. I think that changed somewhere um, later on. But uh, he was the uh, the publisher, I should say editor. Uh, you can see he's got some some introductory remarks here. And you can see it's about 17 pages long. And so it'll be hopefully just a few minutes and I'll flip through here. But uh, you can see it says Jesse Hawaiian, Vol Hawaiian Volcano. And it really goes and talks about Jesse's win in, uh, in that uh, July 1972 tournament. It talks a little bit about his background. You know, several pages here. You can see a fun photo of uh, Takamiyama there. Well, you see a boy there. You can see him training there. Let's see. I'll Kind of shift that over. A little bit of tails, you know, eight foot giants, truth or tall tales. You can see a picture that it's referencing. Tochi Azuma, um, down here, uh, he was uh, down in Australia. Funny video or a funny picture of him shearing a sheep or at least uh, sitting with a sheep. And kind of an interesting, you can see the Bonzuke there. Um, must be the 1973 Bonzuke, can't quite see it talks about the New Year's tournament. Now these were released uh, six times a year. And so uh, they were released right before that, the tournament. And then they, they always did these predictions. Um, this one has a technique corner, talks about Latinage, that the Kimarite, what that is. Your older Sumo World magazine, some of the, some of the, some of them that you find nowadays um, don't have these, these are lost, but they had this insert had all, had all the rankings. You can see a Takamiyama there, Takanohana up at the top, Sumo, Nikita no Fuji, Yokozuna at the time, Kotozakura, Wajima, who would eventually become Yokozuna. But they did the top division rankings, had Jiryo as well. And then it had this really cool insert. It says a uh, Hoshitori Hyo. And this was basically a score sheet that you would keep uh, of all 15 days. So you can see you had the names across the top and here, and you would fill in um 
you know, the open circle for a win, the closed in black circle for a loss. And so you could keep track of the entire tournament right here. And that was, that was pretty cool. This issue talks about uh, Taiho. It says Golden Boy Taiho. And I think there was like eight or nine um, uh, articles in the whole series. So that's pretty cool. You can see that there. Davy Jones, uh, who worked for Pan American World Airways, uh, presented this trophy. Um, he was pretty popular in the English speaking world uh, and presented this Pan Am trophy. Talks about the stumbling when he was trying to lift this heavy trophy. You can kind of see that picture up there. More, more previews of the New Year's tournament. This, this issue talks about woodblock prints. So, um, you know, if you, uh, if you take a look at the 1997 BBM uh, historical series, they actually have woodblock prints on some, some of the cards, uh, many of the cards actually, and then uh, on the back of them they form this uh, sumo scene on some of them as well. So if you're interested in woodblock prints, um, take a look at the uh, 1997 historical series. Takanohana, he was extremely popular. He was a brother of Yokozuna Wakanohana from the 1950s. Uh, so he was, Takanohana never quite made it to Yokozuna. Powerful Ozeki though, so here it talks about um, Takanohana. Here, the, you know, being the inaugural issue and a lot of interest in the English speaking world, it, it tells you about how you get tickets, where you can find them in 1973, some of the prices down here. You know, looks like the most expensive box seat is uh, 3,000 yen down here. Talks about the schedule up here and how do you get to the Sumo Stadium in Tokyo. So it talks about the price to get there and then the actual um, instructions, if you will. <laughs> Love and Marriage Sumo Style, Hasegawa. And it talks about his wedding to Fumiko Sugiura. Is she a pop singer? Um, I don't know. We'll have to read through that, but uh, maybe you can you can check that out there. A little bit of a sumo primer for beginners. Some fun um, answers to some questions you might have, like how, you know how many sumo wrestlers are there? What are the number of annual tournaments? Tournament winner. You know how long does a, a typical sumo bout last? Here's a little article. Can Kita no Fuji continue his reign? And uh, when will he run out of steam? Here's a continuation of that Taiho story here. You can see Taiho, and look at how, how thin he was before he put on that weight and really became a Dai Yokozuna. Arguably uh, one of the top two to three um, Yokozuna ever. Here's a continuation of Takanohana's story, continuation of Tochiazuma down in uh, Australia, and a continuation of the Woodblock prints. Here's some of the important information about this uh, magazine. So you can see Andy Adams was the editor and Dave Jones and MacArthur Whitlock or Whitelock contributing writers. Subscription rates uh, overseas. It's about $11 a year, it looks like. That's kind of, you know, nowadays that seems super cheap, but $11 a year. And then something interesting, you see this a lot in a lot of the early Sumo World magazines is Clark Hatch's Physical Fitness Center. I'm not sure what it's called. Yeah, I think it's called Physical Fitness Center. So you can see Clark was, uh, it seems to be very influential in Tokyo at the time um, for physical fitness and really trying to promote a healthier lifestyle. So it'd be interesting to do a little bit more research on uh, on Clark Hatch. And then at the end, you can see Pan Am um, probably helped sponsor some of the ads here. You can certainly see this back cover ad. It says, congratulations, Sumo World, on your inaugural issue, Pan Am, world's most experienced airline. And, and definitely in the 1970s, that, that was true. They were operating the 747s and a lot of them. The, the big and uh, long haul routes across the, the Pacific and uh, and certainly into Japan. And it wouldn't be a sumo card hub without a, a card here. So this is the uh, Takamiyama card from the 1973 Kalbi or Karubi set. So here's, here's an early card of Takamiyama. Um, not his debut card he had that one the 1971 Kabaya 3d set so a couple years earlier Jesse had his um has his debut card but but this uh, Karubi card is, is certainly pretty cool to uh, to own as well you can see the back of the Karubi cards uh Jesse here is number 11 and then all the the uh, biographical information where he's from the Heya his height weight when he 
um, was born, when when he started in sumo, you know, a number of wins and losses. And then you can see the Kotobi mark down there at the bottom. So, all right, everybody, thanks for the uh, joining me on the flip through and I uh, hope everybody enjoyed that. Let me know if you want to uh, see any other issues and uh, everybody have a great week. Thanks. Thank you.